And there we are. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, Willie. How are you today? Doing all right. Um, well, I am. I am back on this side for the moment. Um, entire day in a car yesterday. A little bit brutal, but you know, you get used to it. Um, I have a stupid question. Mm -hmm. What with your new kiting enthusiasm and your long trip car ride, have you had the thought on a long stretch of road of what if I just put one of these motherfuckers out the window and see what happens? Uh, I have, and actually Punch Mom suggested it, and <laughs> uh, the immediate thought as uh, at, at which it would basically be a twisted metal weapon to destroy the, the trucks behind us yeah. uh, did not encourage me to push further um that though i did have a week i did have some stuff but i i definitely would like to start with um something that i uh i'm finally ready to announce that i've been working on for some time now uh i am happy to reveal as of right now i just tweeted out a link to the project that has completed the second channel that I've created on YouTube is now available. It is called Wooly versus the Algorithm. Oh, that's a really good idea. This is a channel focused on enhanced highlights, shorts, little bits and pieces of all the hours of content that we record on a regular basis. This is going to be compressing them into short and sweet little bits, enjoyable. Uh, definitely the type that can be posted to TikTok as well, certainly. And, uh, yeah, all the juicy morsels that we get from the hours that we put out uh, condensed into some hype, some hype shit. You Quite know, simply. It's funny. There's a link out there on my Twitter. You can check it out. Second channel, please subscribe. Unironically, smash that button. All that shit. Wooly versus the algorithm. Available now. That's a great goddamn name. <laughs> and it makes me think it makes me think well, Wooly versus by the way is like a like a excellent name for any type of you I mean you slap anything at the end there cheers um but it makes me think of I remember a while ago um we were talking about the way you were running Wooly versus and the way I was running Pat stares at and I was just throwing I'm just dumping fucking archive bullshit all over it um which you then described to me as a algorithm annihilating practice which you had not, uh, you didn't have any issues with because you were putting out, you know, standard LP size ep episodes. But this is the one step further. Is like, you know what the algorithm wants more than a half hour long video is a ninety fucking second video. Yeah. And now your your primary channel is algorithmed out to thirty minutes ish. Hours actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, they've been getting longer, huh? Yeah. Because yeah. of the Elden Ring. Hour on average, yeah. Yeah. So, no, that's exactly it. And not only that, but, like, long-form stuff, um, variety stuff, it, all of that has been completely, yes, algorithmed out over the years. Uh, the, there's been ages and, and different focuses on what, what it cares about and what it doesn't care about. But one thing's for sure is the type of – what I have is, what I, is like basically a variety show. And the era of the variety show on TV has died, and it's that kind of thing boy, with this. Boy, has you it. Know? And that doesn't mean that it's not, like... That, 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 that doesn't mean that it's not something that is uh, viable. It's just that it's not something that grows, because the, mm -hmm. the algorithm doesn't want it to grow. But if you're happy with the audience that enjoys what they're watching, they can continue to watch and enjoy that, right? It's just not going to show you to anyone new. That's the main thing. I also have to say, I'm like super pissed off like insanely violently angry because i was like i should probably do that <laughs> and the name was going to be really similar <laughs> <laughs> but you got there like probably like six months ahead of me that's it so now i have to now because, like, I, that channel I have man i ruined <laughs> the fucking data on that thing i fucked that uh... thing up yeah, yeah, no, um, I am, I am, uh, quite satisfied with that name, I'm quite satisfied 
with the uh, no the i'm not gonna call it pat stares at the fucking algorithm you hacks you no. fucking hacks but the goal is for anyone who's like oh what's what is what's the point of the sec oh it should be clear in the name what the point of the second fucking channel is <laughs> yeah you should immediately understand um shout outs to uh soul carl for delivering on some fucking slick ass art um lee Mounzi, of course on the logos and then we got um gianni in there on the on the the trailer as well so take a peek and um from now on uh every basically every couple days and multiple times a week there's going to be little shorts coming out and uh the first one is is live uh, which is, I believe it's called Satan is Excited for the New LP. And it's um, me and Reggie getting started in Darks and uh, Dead Space as uh, Satan has a few things to say about that. So You know, I have to say, uh, the, your opening channel video being I will defeat this hell site, no you won't. But it's a good effort nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, an attempt is being made. But yes. God, uh, real weird week in terms of algorithm, mm. actually, to talk about. Because, like, YouTube, it's kind of been like a known quantity. It's like, man, like, do you remember? Oh, God. Do you remember the day they moved from views to minutes watched? That was the first big one. Because that, that was cataclysmic for everyone yes. but Dirtbag LP channels. Yeah. That was, was a huge We rode one. that wave for years. That was so good. Sorry it, about all the animators that got killed through it, but yeah. It actively, like, changed... Well, that's the thing is, like, it changed <laughs> the type of content that became popular. You know? Like, um... The, like early early shit was just exactly it was just views didn't matter who or what or where or when for how long and, and then the react face titty titty preview pick precisely destroyed that meta annihilated <clears throat> the shit out of it just get a reaction out of somebody um and then you go right into yeah the 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 change from uh overall views to the watch time and then a let's play becomes a fucking darling of the the algorithm hey, there. Man, what if we uh what if we made a big playlist and then the playlist got up in the algorithm and people just put it on and then just walked away because you can't tell if they're actually watching it so and then people they just... uni no no people unironically <laughs> do that on spotify for like artists when they make a big when a yeah. new Tayway song drops all the swifties go and start looping the song 24 7 on their phone without oh, actually listening to it because the plays oh, like on the that. streams that they get are the new numbers. Hey, I have to. I, this is side aside, but like, I don't know at what point in my life this happened, but like, pop music fans, which is like, at one point in my life, used to be like the average person, all became insane people. Like, like, like they all, like, they went from like my mom and dad listened to the radio to, uh, stands i disagree uh i would say because like remember stan existing from fucking eminem writing the song um, right but even before that I, I mean listen i think if the girls that were screaming at elvis and the beatles had twitter that's true you would have seen fan cams that's they simply true. didn't have that access you know um ah, you're I, right you're right um but yeah the uh the algorithm is going to do what it does, and um, I will not defeat it, but a, a, a valiant fight will be had, and um, we'll see where this goes. Uh, probably to a Yamcha-style smoking crater <laughs> with my okay. corpse well, splayed in it. Luck luckily, my slow ass can now just watch and see if this works for you and <laughs> decide whether or not I should do Let's it see also. What it, it's going to work. What but here's the ma but the magic is that at bare minimum at le at bare minimum if it completely doesn't at least it can be dropped wholesale onto TikTok. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, recycle that shit. Let's go. Rinse. Um yeah, so no, By basically By the way, before we continue, 
people will listening to this live on uh, the date in which it's airing. Uh, next week, the podcast will also be uh, live on Tuesday and probably Correct. come out on Wednesday. Yes. Um, that being said, I, I would have preferred to have kept that secret so that I could nefariously laugh and continue to stare at my maps. <laughs> that would have been the plan. Um, so, like, that's great, except we universally, every time we delay it, completely forget to inform anyone until half an hour after the podcast is supposed to have started. I do my best on, <laughs> on, 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 you know, most occasions. I happen to be in a car in shitty, spotty Wi-Fi zone yeah. the entirety of yesterday. What, you and... can't update us from the gas bay? Yeah, well, thanks to, you know, gas bay Z. Um, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was rough. And like when I could get a little bit going, on, at least at the initial parts of the drive, I was planning for this channel. <laughs> I was, you know, yeah, communicating for the, for, for this, this launch. So, um, anyway, we're here. We're good. It's fine. Um, what Congratulations, I will Congratulations, by the way. I'm sure that channel will do extraordinarily well for you. It also th gives me a chance to actually watch all the clips that people tell me I should watch. There, there's that. There's certainly that. Um, yeah, you know, and 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 you know, it's it's a value add, no bullshit. Uh, plus, enhancing the clips means it's more than just highlights. It's a little bit of fun happening happening with the edits too. So, it's it's not just if you've seen it. It's it's new stuff as well. Um, but uh, in the planning of this and and everything. Uh, I was also, like I said, out in New Brunswick. Um, the area I was in, more specifically Nouveau Brunswick, because uh, that province is also very French Canadian, about a third of them. Yeah, it's a different flavour, though. Mm hmm. It's Acadien. And less, less spitting. And it's interesting. Oh, well, I mean, there's still a good bit of that. But what's interesting, too, is the timing of being there, because I was there, like I said, to meet some in laws and. Um, you know, uh, 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 do the rounds and, and sh you know, so on with a um, lot of lot of the uh, you know the you know the uh, um, the Belle Province like employee flavor of person. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you mean like my fucking family? Yeah, 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 yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, got to meet a whole. Pleasant time. Pleasant time with the, the Maritimers. Um, now, uh, the thing too as well is pushing my French to the absolute limits of my ability. Yeah. Um, I was using 110% of my concentration to like sit in the dining room, big French family conversation going on, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm keeping up. Right, and then uh, they're like, "Oh, look who just pulled up! It's the two, tr it's the trucker and his best friend, double trucker, who just yes. walk in with with trucker son, <laughs> and they just go, all right, guess who's boss? My, my yeah, my bit, yeah." You're just like, "Oh fuck, it's Why, gone." Ça va bien, merci. Uh, okay. Salut, uh, enchanté. You know. Ça va bien avec vous? Yeah. All right, yeah. nice my butt. Bows up. See, I'm. I'm lucky. Uh, everyone in my family that uh, would speak like that is fucking dead. Like mm. they're they're long fucking gone. Um, so that, that awkwardness is past me. And you know, it, it, it's it's the we've talked about uh, uh, Quebec Boomhauer. You know, yeah. but it's like it's a little bit of that going on. But just ultimately, I. I start. I'm just dying. I'm like, I, I can't. I, I did my best, but I can't. And fortunately, it wasn't just me. Like, even Punch Bomb is like, yeah, no, no, it's brutal. Like, when we get to the real, real, like, you know, Boonie style version of it, um, it gets hard to understand, even if you are French. We've and... made our own language out here. It's based off of fishing and booze. Yes, and it's literally, it's called <laughs> Shiak. <laughs> oh seriously yes it's called it's called chiac and it is it is a patois it is a derivative style you know um which i you don't have I, time for good book words out on the fucking boat at 4 a.m man but but every once in a while like 
a word like book would show up in the middle of a French sentence or, you know, parquet mon car, you know, and then and, and just all that stuff is, is Man, in full flux. I, you know, I'm out of Quebec and I spent an entire fucking generation of my life fucking going to school and learning how to fucking speak French. And every French teacher was, it has to be this and that something complex, accent grave, ou and then I walk down the street and some fucking old man is going, oh, hey, où est la parking? Yeah, and yeah, It's like, yeah, I'm yeah. glad that I'm learning this fucking language so that anyone I actually interact with just butchers the shit out of it. Just, and you know, you gotta, <laughs> there's a couple tricks that, uh, you know, I pick up on the way. Just everyone, call everyone Chérie, you know, when you can. Just to get that across, term of endearment, and regularly drop c'est uh at mm-hmm. the end of or after a moment of a lull in the conversation. Just a little thigh slap and a, it is what it is, you know? It is what it is. C'est succès. Yep. But uh, what was, uh, oh. it was, it was, yeah, it was a really good time, though. Honestly, like, that area of, uh, you know, Acadian uh, New Brunswick is, yeah, really beautiful. It's the type of thing that um, it's the kind of like small town living where a lot of um, people who come from there retire back there when they get to, the, you know, old enough. Because it's just like everyone's got a dock in their backyard and a big sea- yeah. waterfront boat. Everyone is going out clamming or, or fishing or, you know, just every like you can you can drive into town um and and like uh, you know do your business or you can kayak into town and put your boat on the dock and do that and then kayak back you know um it's that kind of spot uh there's just like all these all these like funny things too like i've been hearing over the years about the traditions like in, uh, in this one in this one city in particular trackity the uh the tradition of the up and down is like basic it's it's where back in the day you would go down to the big old the big old mall the big old parking lot at the top of the big street and just park and watch and see who comes up and who goes down the road and that's how you pass time and if you see somebody watching but the rural style yeah because there's one place to be and you know where if you're going to be doing any business you're going down that main road so you just you just set on up and and you and you watch and you see who comes and if yeah. you see t- someone else doing it then you go oh hey and then you sit together and then you do it. I mean that sounds chill. Actual king of the hilling, you know, like yeah. yep. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh did get to enjoy. Uh, what was really nice was basically the yeah uh, uh the seafood is as you would imagine quite fresh, quite good. Um. You know, I go for seafood here and there. I don't, like, avoid it that or anything. But there's a lot of times where you're just like, eh, if it's bad, it's bad. You don't, you know, you don't want to risk it in some cases. And I, and some of the worst food poisoning I've ever had was because of uh, bad yes. shrimp. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, I was quite pleased when, uh, yeah, one of, the, one of the dinners we had with the family, just a tray f- of lobsters sitting ready to go. And I'm just like, oh, shit, like... I've had lobster um, usually uh, mostly usually kind of like semi cracked open with the tail ready to go. And then the most butter of the, on the lobster side. I've had is like lobster incorporated into something else. Yeah, that work. There's a lot of that, too. Like a lobster roll, you know, is a big thing mm-hmm. um, yeah. or a bisque. But even just when it's served up, you know, like a lot of places uh, in town or. You know, whatever. If you go to if you go to like Red Lobster and, and get a plate, I'm sure you're getting like the it's already kind of split open and you've got the the butter and all all the trimmings and whatnot. Here, it's like eh, butter optional, and also it's kind of like served like cold. It's not even really like a heated up thing. And I was like, whoa, that's that's what? strange. It was very strange. I mean, it certainly wasn't bad. It was still good lobster, but. It was just like here we we take them we shove them in the oven for a bit but f- like for the most part like after that initial like broiling and boiling you kind of aren't eating it like really really hot and i mean i i asked for butter because i'm like 
I mean, this is good, but it would taste so much better with butter. That's kind of the yeah. It's the deal I have. I mean, it's the part. It's one of the main reasons I'm interested in like any of this shit to begin with. Um, but like, yeah, just grabbing two of those. And I don't know. Have you ever like worked apart an entire lobster uh, from completely like uh, shelled to to get in your meat? No. I'm sorry. I, I, I had a, a something ping up on my fucking screen. I was reading it. I was away for a moment. Oh, okay. Have you ever sh- had a lobster fully shelled uh, that you No, ate? never. Okay. Actually. So... Um, I've never been to Red Lobster either. Okay. Well, I, I, I mean, you know, I've done the bit about how, m- how much crab meat takes work and how annoying it is, yada, yada. So, you know, not to even go down back just that path, but... Um, in this case, like it's, I was, I was pleasantly surprised by, uh, you know, what well, I've done this a couple times before, but in this case, it was fairly easy to do. You, it's one of these things where you just kind of look at the whole lobster body, and I, I never realized that like you kind of are when you see like lobster tail, that's kind of the only part you're eating, and then you're getting the claws, right? The whole body front part and then head part is more or less disposable unless you're into like getting into like the eggs and you know if you if some people are like oh it's like you know people who like eat, eat, eating chicken bone marrow there's yeah. people who like eating the eggs but for the most part you're just getting the tail and the claws and, i don't know eating the eggs right out the lobster just seems like i don't know maybe i'm just a squeamish little baby I yeah don't, I don't know, it is it, it's i i had i had some of them and i was like yeah eh. you know it's just a gunk kind of pasty vibe yeah. to it i like the white meat that's good I'm big on texture, so gunk doesn't really appeal. Exactly. But you just got to make sure when you pull the tail out and you learn how to, like, clip, clip, clip and, and, and yank it, you got to strip off the back and make sure that this particular lobster, uh, fresh as it may be, hasn't uh, pooped itself or had any poop in there ready to go because... You may die. Well, you won't die, but it'll be really nasty. No, you would die. So... I mean, I from was... running into traffic and getting hit by a car with the distaste <laughs> of lobster poop in your mouth. I mean, the, the you know uh, the the auntie in law who was prepping them basically went like, "Oh, when I was a kid, I had some, and you know, accidentally didn't clean it out. And it wasn't the end of the world, but you know, the knowledge is not nice, certainly. No, um, no. So make sure make sure to to check your crustaceans for the inner poop before you consume them." Um, but yeah, you know, and, and, and it, it is, a uh, um, admittedly something back in Grenada too, that like kids would do is you'd catch crayfish, which is kind of like, you know, like eh, shrimp, like small little halfway thing. And then there's like lagostines, which are the, the other in between as well. I don't care for crayfish. Um, so I, you remember how I'm like terrified of lobsters? Hmm. Like, I'm, like, absolutely terrified of lobsters. So my dad thought it would be a really good idea uh, to cure me of my fear of lobsters. Uh, That one day he came home from fishing with his buddies and had found a gigantic blue, bright blue shrimp that had one of its arms torn off. uh, And was like, hey, Cat Pat, come out of the driveway. And, like, gave it to me like it was a puppy. Um... (laughs) And was like looking at me like, <sighs> like I, I had lost my mind when I like hit the wall and yep, was like, get yep, that away from me, get yep. that away from me, get that away from me. And just like, he's like, oh, I thought you'd get used to it. And then you Every... would be afraid. And I'm like screaming and on the verge of tears. And he's like, okay, Every... whatever. Every like pre 80s parent that just thinks that like, the rawest shock exposure therapy is going to be the way to get over Are you whatever terrified that of is. dogs? Here's a dog. Here's a Lop room full of arms. them. Lock the yeah, door. Like... Yeah. Um Yeah, yeah no. Don't care, I mean, don't care for crawfish. I mean, for me it was always a, a thing though where like, you know, the kids would catch them and because I'm not eating any like uh, 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 you know, non-biblical foods, non-kosher foods right. at that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would, I just never, the Bible. Yeah. just never got to have seafood. So, um, yeah, technically it's, it's, it's anything of the ocean that does not have scales. Uh, I have to really point out, uh, I, I'm going to 
this has nothing to do with anything, but you mentioned a tiny phrase that makes me insane, like legit every time I hear it, um, which is vegetarian. Well, no, I eat fish. Fish don't count. Versus seafood. But you don't mean seafood. You mean non-fish seafood. Yes. Why? Why is the terminology around fish so fucking stupid and exclusive? Very weird. Like, yeah. the flesh of a fish isn't meat? Then what the fuck is it? Grains? So my mom my mom was, was like that. She's like, I'm a vegetarian except for fish. I'm like, okay, so you're a pescatarian, you know? But, like, I guess that, yeah, that you just there's more accurate words you can use. Um, but when you say I eat fish, you mean fish. And when you mean I eat shrimp and you know clam yeah and whatever. no it's just the, just the bigger seafood. one the bigger one is like fish isn't meat which makes me like have a <sighs> conniption i feel like my head's gonna pop off i'm like what do you think meat is i exclusively like a lobster's eat. got meat i i exclusively devi uh, devour capybara that's uh, yeah that's my seafood that's diet. Right. uh yeah. you can't yeah you, you're getting <laughs> that's that, it, that no that, that's crazy that's fucking insane but um all the, the the seafood I've had though that is like you know like more crustacean type, I've I've you know kind of noticed that it's like yeah it really is in a lot of cases about the topping whether it's butter or the you know like a mussel or with like a yeah. red wine or vinaigrette or something. Um, but what was quite cool as well was we were staying in a little like a little uh, uh, chalet kind of house on the waterfront, and. Um, <laughs> Because these small towns are are fucking there, they are what they are. Small town living, small town maritime population. Yeah. The person who was like uh, renting out the Airbnb was actively a like second cousin of Punch Moms that was like, of oh course. yeah, okay, well no, you're related to this. Oh yep, had this ancestor in common and going back. That's, you know. And that's why at a certain point you have to move away, or else it gets real, real squirrely. Yep. Insulated. Let's, no good. Yeah. Ins yeah, I think I told the story about the the guy who's the genealogist for the uh, Acadians in in New Brunswick. He does a full family tree for everybody, and based on your your test, um, when he says he puts, you have to leave town or not, he says basically <laughs> if you don't have um, at least an attachment five generations back, it's free. So. He knows essentially that there will never be it, people that are from here that are not at least going uh, five generations back. You know, I think that was the number. So, um, pretty fucking, pretty fucking wild on that. But yeah, uh, the 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 place we were staying, the dude was very, very, very nice. Um, and he was basically he's he, in the morning time. He'd go out and grab his little like you know shovel and rake, and he just like. I go for he just go digging for for um clams and he just okay and he just he did that because he, he was climbing that was his thing and then he's like hey you guys want some some fresh clams and i'm like fuck yeah you know so got to enjoy like that as well which again they the way they do it is very little preparation just a little bit of fire and then pop them in your mouth and uh that was that was quite nice i enjoyed that too uh, I, i've i've again rarely had it so raw but um, between that and that that time, the, uh, well, the best fish I've had being like right next to the airport in Jamaica, uh, just family that fishes it out of the water, throws it on the fire, puts it in foil, and hands it to you. It's like, yeah, no, I'm a believer in this now. Like I've been convinced. Yeah, that, like, like I have to say, uh, so the night that we stayed in Montreal before we made the big trip, we had a big sushi platter from a fancy sushi restaurant in the area, and it was all right. It was a little overpriced, but it was okay. Then we come all the way out here to the West Coast, and within a week we go, oh, let's just try, you know, let's just pick up some fucking sushi. And it wasn't a Sushi Express, but it was like the fuck, the fucking, like, sushi fucking mart. Like, just mm -hmm. absolute, like, shittiest possible name, hole-in-the-wall sushi place that was, like, dirt cheap. And we're like, whatever. And we're sitting there going, like, Oh, this is this is like a hundred times better than any sushi I ever had anywhere mm -hmm. near the East Coast. Like, fucking like it's to the point of like 
don't bother eating sushi at all unless you're 50 km from a coast. It, Just it's, don't. Yeah, it's don't I mean, even the, bother. Like the freshness adds a, adds a quality to it that is like you can still be lazy with the preparation of the food and yeah. get away with it because the the freshness will make up for the what the lack of effort you're putting in you know it's it's really it, like i knew it was a, i knew it was gonna be better because we're closer to the coast and i had sushi in japan and that was obviously excellent because no mm -hmm. shit mm -hmm. but i was like oh it's li like it's literally just the distance like that one extra day of shipping like kicks it up from a seven to a nine despite it being an identical dish yeah, dude, like, there's, there's a feeling that comes with, like, ordering some sushi. Like, I got, like, a platter here and uh, put some sashimi in my mouth and, like, the, the or nigiri. And, like, the fish is cold because it's still frozen. And I'm like, fuck Yay. off, man. No. You, you cut the salmon into squares and then had it pre-frozen and the frost is still on my tongue now like that sucks dude that's awful uh yeah so um, i don't care for that no so I'm on, I'm on i'm on a bit of a seafood kick you know um i almost never I, I barely ever do pasta ever these days like literally like maybe once a year but um had some linguine with uh, uh, scallops and shrimp in it from over there because I'm like, yeah, you got to do it while you're here. You got to do it. And uh, shit was fucking incredible. It was great, you know. So um, uh, uh, look at where you are on the map and and um, use that to your advantage. Because, yeah. Like, for example. The mediocre becomes like, great. Like, if I, I you know, I'm not going to swear off bagels, right? But... I guarantee you, every single time I bite into a bagel for the rest of my life, I'm gonna just go, "Yeah, this is, this is bullshit. This is mm -hmm. not like a real bagel," mm -hmm. which is a, a one of those things that people in Montreal and NYC get to do, mm -hmm. just be just complete fucking pieces of shit forever about it. Yeah, no, it it it's you're gonna you just you get to be one of those people, or you know, like oh, you have a Philly cheesesteak, but. Is it from Pat's or is it from the other one? I forget which one. There's, there's the racist one yeah. and the not racist one. <laughs> you know, it's fun. I don't know. It's funny because like I'm thinking about I'm thinking about Geno's chicken wings. Whatever. I'm thinking about chicken wings, and I'm thinking about you and I sitting next to each other. Uh, sitting were we next to each other or across from each other? At Anchor Bar. Um, I don't remember. But everybody else got like completely reasonable food. Because they were told it was spicy, and they're like having, they were enjoying their their anchor bar wings, and me and you are just sitting there going like, "I want the second highest," and you go, "I want the highest," and they bring mm. us our wings, and we're biting into them. And we have about five minutes of like, "Wow, these are incredible," followed by twenty minutes of just staring at each other and sweating, mm -hmm. and sweating more, and everyone else going, "Are you guys okay?" And we would be like, "You know, we're you know, mm, it's good, it's spice, it's spicy." good yeah those are um, incredible buffalo wings but you gotta when you, oh, no one's ever gonna serve them to them like that anywhere else signing a waiver before you eat them do, do, is that real do we do that no but they do that they do that at um the the place on on crescent that has like the super ghost pepper wings yeah. or whatever but it's just like at that point though it's like it's not even a good sauce so you're like it's just burning you but it doesn't taste good i'm like that yeah sucks. no like yeah you no. gotta you gotta have flavor on the fucking wing when you're going super hot as well um anyway so yeah seafood kick is going good um jumped out on the water got to boat for a little bit uh that was a fun time and you know, I, I, I'm still kind of hung up on my bad kayaking experience, so I'm kind of like yeah. not super down to kayak, you know, ever since the fucking near drown. But um, Well, I mean, I would not blame you for that. Um, drowning is an incredibly unpleasant experience that activates that, that primal fight or flight, don't do it fucking emotion. Yeah. No, I, I, I am indeed shook. But um, like, uh, 
I, but I've also like gotten really comfortable with the water and I can swim and yeah. do basic uh, level one. Yeah, but it's, it's, shit, the, so. it's the specific. Like when I was a little kid and, you know, my parents were like, time to learn how to swim. I was like fucking terrified. I was mm -hmm. absolutely fucking terrified, mm -hmm. but I couldn't tell you why. And then I later found out many years later that um, before my memory started, I was at um, one of my mom's friends' house and her slightly older child kicked me into the pool, uh, which caused me to almost die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's about and right. And I'm like, well, that explains that complete nightmare feeling I got Christ. learning how to swim. That explains that a lot, actually. Huh. Weird. My, you know, I did. I jumped in myself as a dumb kid, but like, no, the involuntary launch into the water is, is yeah, that's that's early trauma. You're not going to get over too too easily. So, nah. nice. Um, something to note about the uh, uh, the the Acadian side of of Canada, the 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 French New Brunswick is the only other place I've seen. Like, you know that fucking flagomania Americana spirit? Like, yeah. you can never have Stars and Stripes too big. If your entire house is draped and we can't get yeah. inside because there's a giant flag blocking the way, that's perfect, right? That it's, level. It's adorable. It's adorable. Insanity, right? Um, so this place is ridiculous with it. They will oh, yeah. anything you, because the, it's um, you know they've got the the red white and blue and then uh, a, a a yellow star, and any time you can get those four colors together in any way, like literally, there's people that are just like, uh, uh dudes like oh uh, I've got one of, yeah one of the one of the uh, um uncle in laws is like oh I had a red boat and my neighbor had a blue and a white one so we just parked them all together and then I'm gonna paint a star on it and that'll Aww. you know that that'll be that that's you know. Cute. Little electric poles, um, fucking That's cute. everything, everything, everywhere at all times is this flag. Uh, it is it is a wild level that rivals America for for you know patriotic spirit uh, uh, of the Acadian flag. I had no I, I had no idea that New Brunswick had like a like a provincial identity that was that strong. So it turns out that like historically, it's uh, it, it goes back to. You know, like Upper Canada, Lower Canada shit, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, um, um, when when the British were stomping out the French, uh, yes. they... Or my grandpa was stomping out my other grandpa, yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the, uh, that area of Canada was called Acadia, right? It was, like, it was its own, like, province kind of zone that was, like, the Acadian, you know, uh, uh, one. And then, like, it got broken up into... Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, you know, the Maritimes in general, um, well, as, as a part of their whole, like, fine, we'll let you keep your culture, just don't be, don't, don't, don't get too rowdy about it, bow to the queen and all that shit, and, you know, whatever they fucking yeah. said. And then um, they could continue to just fucking not. Yeah, and, and, uh, the, so, but that <laughs> kind of goes back to that time, um, and then, of course, there's the there's the the pathway south that goes directly from there to Louisiana, you know, yeah. and, and, and New Orleans and all that. Uh, so you get that's where Acadian turns into Cajun, right? Um, but uh, yeah, they got they got the wild flag mania going on up there, and um, I can report that at least one day was spent in search of good winding spots, good kiting spots. I would imagine there'd be plenty out on the East Coast. So I've learned something really, I've learned the dark, the dark side of kiting. It's finally, it's finally kind of sunk in. I thought that um, this would be something where I'm like, you know what? I've got some time. It's a nice day outside. Fuck it. Let's just go. Right? That's right. kind of how I've been playing it. But the dark side is... It's not just that you're looking on, like, the wind map, which, I, again, I've subscribed to for, like, right. the best spots or so. It's that if it's not a particularly windy day, 
the really cool professional kites, like the good shit, you cannot fly at all. Oh, uh, okay, I see. Yeah. So the so the whimsical little pizza flying kite I was using, or even like the whale, right? Those are things where it's a single line and you can kind of go out and like if it's getting you're getting a decent gust, you can just throw it up there and have a good time. But now that I'm getting into the real shit, the two-handed full control um, where you need to run to make up because the because you're, when you're holding with two hands, you don't have a reel anymore, right? Yeah. So you can't tighten the line. You have to make up for it with physical movement. You've got to sprint backwards or forward. And if the gust is not consistently strong, you can't fucking launch at all. Um, so yeah, that's the sad. The sad part is like now that I'm at this level, I can't just go out whenever I want and get a good kiting session going. I have to. I've gotten for too them. good. I don't get any enjoyment <laughs> from low wind situations. It just it's I'm now in that mid range. That mid range where you have to wait for the right opportunity. It sucks. I'm glad you were I'm glad you were able to somehow bring over the experience of being too good at fighting games to play with your friends to fucking flying a kite. Good job. It, so now, right? When I see a windy day, it's not up to whether I want to or it's like, no, you have to take this chance because you'll you don't know when it's coming again. Similarly to like, oh shit, there's a monthly going on. Well, fuck, I'm never gonna get to go play again against yeah. decent competition for now. Gotta get down to your locals. Like it's it's really hit that point. <laughs> yeah, they all that's way worse though because the wind is. I mean, the wind is is. Like metaphorically, historically, literarily, culturally fickle. Yeah, yeah. It's the most fickle fucking natural element. And I'm looking for like like the big the big one I'm launching. Like I, I want to get practicing because it's gonna take a lot. That needs like consistent like 10 mile per hour winds or like 16 kph. You know. So um, we were looking at the at the wind chart and. Um, I was checking the uh, the scuttlebutt to see what people are saying about the the area and, and, and whatnot. And uh, there was one spot we found that was the windiest possible spot. And this is at the tip, tip, tip of the fucking, of the bottom lip as described. All the way at the tip, there's a lighthouse and, a, and like an open kind of beach area. And it's yeah. ocean. It's just hard Atlantic coming at you. You know, and uh, like you're, you can't possibly hope for a windier situation than that. I, I have, I might have asked a variation of this question prior, but now that you're describing the lighthouse beach, um, I have a, 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 a fairly stupid question to ask. Let's say you're way into flying the big kite, the one that needs the extra wind. And I remember you describing that those things, and you're a pretty big guy. Those things have some pull if, oh, yeah. you, if you catch them right. I feel like we're in a scenario in which the likelihood of you like hurtling off a cliff has increased to more than 0%. Okay. This is true of the so what okay, so there's three big kites that I have, right? There's three classifications because I have I have a couple smaller ones, but of the um, uh, let's call them fucking what uh, large class uh, dreadnought class kites. <laughs> is yeah, that is sure, that gonna sure. let's, yeah? Let's call them that. <laughs> of of the giant class kites I have, there's three. Two of which are trainer kites, and one is a delta. Now the two trainer kites are essentially they don't look like kites; they look like small parachutes. Right. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that will pull you off the ledge, pull your body all the way, because the reason why they're called trainer kites is because they're for training when you're kite surfing. So when you actually try to get out on the water and do kite surfing, you're going to have something similar. These are for land versions of that, that you want to pull you that should be able to support your body weight, because when you're out on the waves, that's exactly the goal. Um so uh, you can get a good a good like flight and control system going with those two, but um, the one I the one I'm working on that I really want to get good with is the Delta, and the Delta is just it's a large triangle, uh, and you can attach like a super long like a twenty foot tail to it and make it do like spiral tricks, and you can basically like draw in the air 
you know, by having it go whatever way and then the tail will follow for 20 feet. Um, and that thing is, it's not strong enough to really pull me because it's not like the, the parachute okay. kind. But if it gets really windy, it's gonna, I'm going to need to drop my weight back on it. Yeah, um, okay. But the place I was going with the lighthouse, it was not a lighthouse to a cliff drop. It was a lighthouse to a beach down sand into the water directly. So at worst, I would get pulled into the beach water and not yeah. over to my deck. But that's the cold-ass Atlantic. It is, in fact, the cold-ass Atlantic, yes. Um, there are a lot of people that were on the beaches were not in the water. They were just enjoying the sand and, and sunlight. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, that... that uh, I think there's a, again there's a there's a map you can actually look at to see like where the Arctic water um, goes directly and then it comes this way and then it does a big circle and goes back up towards Europe before it warms up. Um, but we're yeah, on the fucking was, super uh, cold side. It was literally yesterday when I found out that the Pacific Ocean is substantially warmer than the Atlantic Ocean. Mm. Did not know that. I thought water's water, man. Yeah, no, it, it's it's a huge difference based on just like the the go go look at the the arrows that show you the flow of like the mm -hmm. the entire Pacific and, and Arctic circuits, uh, um, um, uh, Pacific and Atlantic circuits. Like you can see how it comes into tropic areas or it comes into like you know like larger populated areas on land, and then it warms up, and then like does a big tour and goes right back out into the middle um and then again it gets cold as it hits the top or the south pole right so um yeah you don't want to fuck with that uh and i and i saw the other end of this exact trajectory from iceland on that beach that literally claimed lives when people turned away from it because the sneaker waves would come up and get you uh because yeah. there's nothing stopping that wind from the top of the planet all the way to this you know uh, a fucking patch of sand like yeah that reminds me of um uh the temperatures out in fucking calgary and edmonton like get so low that they fucking break recording instruments because the wind chill gets so nuts because there's nothing to stop the wind for like 400 kilometers mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. rolling planes for literally more than you could drive in a day yeah, there's like videos and 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 short uh, little like studies on like the effects of what happens to the human body when you live in like the coldest parts of Siberia, and like literally like the coldest places on the planet that that people are are, are like regularly living in, um, and just like blinking is a concentrated effort that is a thing you have to you can't just rely on your regular blinking like you have to you know, anticipate blinking even faster and more early because of the, the frost that builds up on your fucking eye. It's, it's nuts, man. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, we were, we were made for some environments and, and not for others, but, uh, all this to say that the, the, I, I, it sucks. Cause I, I went to the fucking ocean front and still couldn't get some good wind. And it was just, it was Bummer, just a man. bad, it was a bad week for it, you know? So yeah, That's the nuts. dark, the dark side of kiting, uh, it's not up to you, you know. It's 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 up to the fucking to the wind itself to to uh, Fujin, and when Fujin decides, that's when you have to get ready to go. So, um, I'm gonna have the kite like kind of just ready, and like if I look and it looks like it's it's a good time, you gotta kind of just run out and get it. Almost like aren't there? You know, there's a couple. I'm like there's a couple hobbies like that, right? Like where you yeah. you don't get to plan where and when. You just have to be ready to do it. Uh, so there's, uh, there is surfing, obviously. It's going to depend on whether, um, the one that most pe that, that I'm most familiar with is, um, astronomy is mm. extraordinarily weather dependent, not just because of clouds, but, uh, you want the opposite of kiting weather because more turbulence means more air shakeup and certain parts of the world have what's called good seeing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is just the air is just a, just a slightly calmer, just, less light just pollution, a little bit from nearby cities. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's why they build a, the you know ground based telescopes out in the ass end of fucking nowhere in the middles of deserts and shit like that. Mm -hmm. uh, thing uh, bird watching as well. Which uh, there were some binoculars yeah. that were in the cabin that we were in, and 
um, yeah, you kind of just like, if you're into bird watching, you got to just be like, oh shit, I think there's some stuff going on. Pull over and just do it, you know? So um, I might have to have like, unfortunately the, the Delta cut I have like folds up really nice, but I might have to just start walking with it as a you never know when kind of well, accessory. I feel like I feel like the simplest solution is to have like like a window right next to your head that you sleep next to and you plant like a flag of choice next to it and then every morning when you wake up you just go is that is that a, is oh, is, it, is it blowing or not I've got 3 flags in my view from where I am when I wake up and take a look outside right there's there's some skyscrapers that have them and um they can tell me how fast the wind is blowing and they can also tell me whether or not canada is still at half mass because yeah <laughs> that was uh that 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 was a, a while i think they're back up to full mass now you know um thereby indicating that uh all the native children's bodies were found right so mission i'm sure there's over. more well then the flag will just have to just you know the more you yep um anyway no it uh it was uh, uh yeah okay in case you guys there was, last year we talked about this oh do ago. you oh they don't People, know no, they don't know they don't know all right oh no every once in a while while we float up here on our smug canadian like haha look at america you guys are so goofy or a uh, um a nice big uh fucking hot reminder of the bullshit that uh our history contains comes up and in this case it's the uh buried bodies of children from natives uh residential schools back in the day which yeah, were so the, the schools that were made to uh quote unquote kill the indian save the man yeah so uh i don't know you probably had a extraordinarily different experience with this because you're obviously a black guy but i remember a couple you know second tier relatives friends of the family or whatever that i'd be going in history class and oh the fucking smugness the absolute just intense smugness over oh you're learning about how the americans had the slaves huh oh what a goddamn disgrace oh that racism shit is on and then these same people would like would not piss on a native guy if he was on fire and would just come out with the the wildest shit I ever heard in my fucking life. But that's different. Not the same. That's, that's different though. And and you know, uh furthermore, because it was a, it was pushed by the church, you get to kind of chalk it up to God's will as well while you're at it. Right? Snatching babies yeah. from the hands of mothers to shove them in the schools and essentially completely deculturalize them is uh, it's, it's what the church wanted, so it's fun, you know. Anyway, um, so yeah, for a while there, they kept finding them, and um, the amount of graves found, the 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 dirt that was being dug up to reveal them, like the wind from that would. Uh, travel all the way across the nation of Canada and drop every flag to half mass. Yeah. Um, and uh, just when they thought maybe they could put it back up, uh, another burial ground would be found and then it would, it would drop again. So they kind of just kept it there for the entire so, year, really. I don't know if, if, if our, our non-Canadian viewers remember, but when the Trudeau got caught with the blackface, the absolute funniest part of that was a reporter asking him, Trudeau, sir, how many more of these photos are going to come out? And the response was, I shit you not, I, I don't know. Yes. And the follow-up question that the reporter asked was, can you round up to the nearest five? <laughs> yeah. So it's like that, but with dead kids instead of blackface. Just like that. You know, but ha ha, you silly Americans, we superior Canadians laugh at you from up here. Ma. Anyways, um, well, you know who you can really blame for that. That's mm -hmm. right. The British. Oh, well, there's I mean, there's a consistent through line on all that shit, I suppose. Which is 
which is the one half of my fa- this is my favorite part the one half of my family blaming the other half of my family both ways for everything <laughs> bad that has ever happened in the country uh yeah although they get to say though that technically uh <laughs> england ended slavery there before it did in america right yeah they get to they get to hold that little point up that's a technicality <laughs> oh god um so you know um kites good fun yeah kites huh good fun 